Hi everyone, welcome to our second class on SQL and uh, uh, in general databases, relational databases. Last class uh, we covered the definition language for data, the database. We actually used MariaDB, but uh, since then we had issues with installing my, uh, MariaDB on uh, Mac. Therefore, I decided to just switch back to MySQL. So we will basically use MySQL in this class. I wrote instructions on basically what version of MySQL to install, the community edition. It is the free open edition that you can develop on and even uh, applications that are basically uh, proprietary. So on Mac, uh, the, the only Windows they install is quite simple. You download the community edition and then you install. I recommend in my case, I downloaded the community edition non-web based. So it's actually the second download that you would get in uh, this list for Windows. Let me actually show it to you. So for Windows, if you try to uh, download, you would have a web download and a non-web download. I downloaded the second one, but you can download either one of them. Uh, basically, it's the community server and separately you can download the workbench. So the workbench is an application similar to Heidi that we had for MariaDB that allows you to write queries and then run them uh, on that uh, specific server. We will actually cover something similar for uh, MongoDB. It's called MongoDB Compass, which basically is used for running uh, queries. It's like an IDE a client that lets you run queries on a specific server. For MongoDB, we are actually are going to do it both on our local host and we are going to do it on a cluster, Atlas MongoDB cluster that allows you to basically connect and uh, run queries directly on that server. So in this way, you have both the uh, experience of running your own database or using a cloud database. Uh, there were some questions in the chat, so let's take a look. You can use any DB you want. You can still use MariaDB. Uh, I personally prefer MariaDB, but since it's not supported for those students that have a Mac, I will basically use MySQL for uh, the next lecture. Um, also, now MariaDB and MySQL have different uh, drivers to access uh, the database. I will teach the node.js mysql driver next class so because we switch to a database that is supported by both mariadb uh, actually uh, windows and uh, mac os i will cover the mysql driver you can always try to basically go over the mariadb driver it's quite similar to the mysql driver okay good so let's cover the query language for SQL and also uh, in general, basically uh, relational algebra. So relational query languages are those languages that basically query the database, uh, a relational database. So the next step after we created in the last class, the database, we also learned insert statements uh, is actually to query the database. So database query language is a special purpose programming language designed for retrieving the data from the database. And we are going to discuss today about two languages. First, an abstract language called relational algebra is an intermediate language used within the database man management system to query the data from these relations. It's the original language that was developed for querying uh, relational databases. Is a procedural, that means that the order of operations is stated in the expression. However, uh, the query optimizer can actually find equivalent uh, expressions with a better execution. Uh, so basically a faster execution plan. 
So we'll basically learn the basic operations that are available in relation, relational algebra, like select, project, join. And then we are actually going to learn the predominant application level relational based uh, database query language, uh, the SQL structure query language. And basically the way that you should understand that SQL works is that internally the database management system translates uh, SQL into relational algebra. So really the same operations that we are going to see in relational algebra are those that are in SQL when we write a select statement from, and then it does uh, basically operations that we will see in relational algebra. So an SQL query for any relational database is parsed and translated into a relational algebra expression. And that one is uh, transformed into equivalent uh, relational algebra expressions by a query optimizer. That will be the last uh, basically relational algebra expression which is optimized, that's the query execution plan. And from the query execution plan, we can basically compile that into executable code that iterates over the tuples in the actual physical database to do the execution of this relational algebra expression. Now, we ignore actually the lower level because the this SQL is all that we actually uh, are going to write, but we have to see how is the best way to write SQL queries, considering that we are actually going to compile them into this relational algebra, uh, simpler operations. So what is an algebra? is a language based on operators and the domain of values and operators take elements in the domain and transform them into other elements in the domain. For instance, arithmetics is an, an example of algebra. You have numbers, you have operators, you take expressions that are combining the numbers with operators and their value are also numbers. In the case of relational, uh, in, in the case that the set is all relations, then we get relational algebra, an algebra for relations. Now, when we have an expression expressed in this relational algebra, we call it a query, and the result produced by that uh, expression, by that query, is the query result. So relational algebra is quite simple. The domain is the set of relations that you defined in your database, the basic operators that we will learn are select, which basically apply a condition and filter uh, some relation in the database into, uh, rela into a relation that only contains those tuples that uh, satisfy the condition in the select statement. Project projects a tuple in, or, or basically a relation only on a subset of the attributes of that relation. So basically it selects some of the attributes, not all of the columns in the table, but some of them. Union, uh, for union compatible relations, it creates a union of the uh, relations. So basically for those relations that have the same attributes, since relations are basically sets of tuples, it creates a union of the sets into a new set. Set difference and other operations, intersection are available for uh, re relations. Cartesian product is uh, basically a multiplication of the two relations. It basically creates every possible tuple where the beginning of the tuple is from the, from the first relation and the end of the tuple is from the second relation. So it's a quite big uh, product. It creates every single combination between the tuples from the se uh, first relation with tuples in the second relation. Now, given that we have these basic operators, we can also have additional operators which are defined with these basic operations. So for instance, we can define intersection, we can define division, we can define join. And each one of them can be expressed with the previous basic operators, like a join would be Cartesian product with select. A division needs Cartesian product select and projection. We'll see how it works. Now, one thing that I said about relational algebra is this is procedural. Once the query optimizer finds 
one expression that is most efficient, equivalent to the original expression that we want to compute. Uh, this is executed like an algorithm. We apply the inner operators first on the inner relations, then we apply uh, the next operators on the resulting relations and so on. So it's a procedural a, a programming language. It, you determine the result out of that expression by uh, applying the first operators, the inner uh, pr most, pro uh, most priority operators on the inner expressions and filtering out uh, the entire result out of intermediate results. So the first operator that we'll talk about is selection. So sigma of a, uh, on a condition or out of a relation produces a new relation or table that contains a subset of the rows of the argument uh, relation, satisfying the condition that was given. So for instance, if you have a table or relation that contains uh, all of these tuples that we see here, uh, John that likes uh, stamps, John that likes coins, Bart that likes stamps and Mary that likes hiking, uh, the selection on the hobby equals stamps out of that relation person gives us a new relation that has the same attributes with the original relation, but it only keeps the tuples where the hobby is stamps. So a selection is like a filter on a set of attributes, on a set of uh, tuples into a new set. And the result is also a relation because it has attributes exactly the same attributes as the original relation, only less number of tuples. Even if the condition is false and you are not extracting any tuples, you still have as a result a relation with the same attributes with the original relation, but no tuples in it. The condition that we are writing in this select statement is basically an attribute operator and then either a constant or another attribute. And there are all of these different operators available, equal, greater than, less than, greater than, equal, less than, equal, and not equal. The representation of not equal is this uh, less than, greater than sign. We will also see that this is extended in uh, uh, SQL to other operators like in, which allows to check if an attribute is in another set of attributes which is obtained a set of values, which is obtained through another uh, nested query between that is really uh, less than and greater than. So you are checking if a certain uh, attribute is between a, a minimum and the maximum. Like, which is a string based pattern search with percent sign, you can basically write a pattern search. Now, uh, basically the equal operator that we have here and also the greater uh, less than they work for numbers, they work for strings uh, uh, and the same with the other operators. Okay. Out of simple selection condition, we can build more complicated uh, selection conditions using the Boolean operators and of two conditions. We'll have a conjunction of the two conditions is true when they are both true and false otherwise, or and not. So it basically combines the Boolean conditions into another Boolean condition that is true when basically the operator uh, agrees and is they are both true or is you know, at least one of them is true, not is the, the inverse of the condition. If the condition is false, then not of that condition is true. So here I, ha I have some examples. So for that person table that we had before that contained the ID, the name, the hobby, uh, you can basically write more complex conditions. I want all those tuples for which the ID is greater than 3000 or the hobby is hiking. Or I want the tuples where the ID is between 3000 and 3999. Or I want the tuples where the hobby is not hiking. And I can write it in two different ways. I can use not of equal or uh, the difference between uh, hobby and hiking. Okay. Now here I actually use the not equal, but of course this is, you can't write it on the keyboard. So I will just use less than greater than. So 
So yes, person is the table that we are uh, querying. It was the one that I defined two slides basically before. It's this person table, which contains the attributes ID, name, address, and hobby. And you can write select statements over that relation. You can write select statements over any uh, relation that is obtained, for instance, from another operation on other relations. And we, are see, we will see how we combine them after we do a couple of uh, operators. So the second relational algebra operator is projection. So when you have a select statement and you say select name and ID, it's a projection. Basically, you project the relation on a set of uh, attributes that is in the attribute list. It produces a relation containing only a subset of the columns in the argument relation table. So if we have the same table as before, person uh, with attributes ID, name, address, and hobby, if I only want the name and the hobby into a new relation, I can project the table person onto the attributes name and hobby. So I have basically the same uh, uh, tuples that I had before, uh, but only the name and hobby attributes. Now, one thing to remember about relations is that they are sets. So if after the projection, I basically have uh, duplicates in the resulting relation, only one copy is kept. So the duplicates are eliminated. So this is what this basically says. The relational algebra has a set semantics, which states no duplicates. So for instance, if I project on the name and the address, so I basically uh, project the original table on the name and the address, and I get basically John is at uh, 123 Main Street, John is at 123 Main Street, Mary is at 7 Lake Drive, and Bart is at 5 Pine, Drive, uh, Pine Street it will basically eliminate the duplicate that John is at 123 Main Street. So the, the, in order for the relation, the result to be a relation or a table, that means no duplicates, but the definition, it's a set semantics. The result will have, in some cases, fewer table, uh, tuples than the original after I do a projection. So the projection may actually eliminate some of the, uh, ro the rows, the tuples, because only uh, unique elements are kept. Uh, now you can combine the relational algebra uh, expressions operators that we had before. So for instance, I applied the select statement on uh, select operator on those tuples that where the hobby is stamps or the hobby is coins. That will give us basically the first two tuples and the last tuple. And if I want only the ID and the name for those uh, results, I basically can project the intermediate result on the ID and the name. So I get the first three tuples. I, I do not care about actually the hobby. I want to filter it out. I project on the ID and the name and I get only John and Bart, because John is a duplicate. He has two hobbies that were selected in the previous relation. So basically the result in order to be a set keeps only uh, two tuples. So this is how we combine. We apply from the inner uh, uh, relations uh, operators to the outer relations, the relational algebra operations. In this, uh, so there is a question from Connor. In this example, how can we have two rows with the same primary key? I didn't define that ID is a primary key. So basically, uh, this is a relation that there is no primary key yet, or you can consider that the uh, key is the in entire tuple. Okay. So, yes, okay. So when we define person, we didn't st state anything that there is a primary key yet. Uh, if you would define ID to be a primary key, then these two tuples cannot be here because as you said, as you are right, basically the two tuples uh, cannot exist. Good, very good question. Okay, now, as I said, since a relation is a set, 
I can apply any other set operation, like intersection, union, set difference. The result of combining the two relations is basically also a relation. However, because the, the elements have to have the same structure, you cannot do intersection or union on relations that have different attribute names. So the, you can only apply set operations like intersection, union, and set difference on so-called union compatible relations. That basically means the same attribute names uh, for these two relations. So we basically have that two relations are union compatible if they have the same number of columns or attributes. The name of attributes are the same in both and the attributes with the same name in both relations have the same domain. So ID in one relation has to be integer and the other one has also to be integer. You can't have integers and uh, strings as the same attribute. And you can basically see that you cannot union two tables if you created them with create table and in one the ID is a number and the other one is a string. So once you have union compatible relations, you can combine them with union, intersection and set difference. So for instance, here is, there are two union compatible relations. Uh, originally the, the two tables person and professor are not union compatible because person has an SSN and professor has, for instance, an office and a phone number. But if I project on the name, the person, and I project on the name, the professor, now these two are union compatible. This relation, the projection has as a result, a relation with a single attribute name and the second project also has, uh, is a relation with a single attribute name. So they are union compatible. So we can basically do set difference. I can find all of the people that are not, the names of all the people that are not professors. And this is the same in SQL. In SQL, in order to apply the union operator, you need to basically have the two tables to have exactly the same attributes. Next operation that we'll talk about is Cartesian product. You learned about Cartesian product of relations in uh, CSC 215, Foundations of Computer Science. These relations are the same with those relations that we had or tuples that we had in, uh, uh, in, re in Foundations of Computer Science. So basically we can apply Cartesian product. If S and R are two relations, then S, uh, R Cartesian product S is the set of all concatenated tuples where we start with X and we end with Y, where X is a tuple in R and, X, uh, and Y is a tuple in S. So basically all possibilities of interleaving tuples from R with tuples from S. So here we have an example. For instance, we have the relation R with attributes A and B and two tuples, x1, x2, and x3, x4. And then I have the relation S with attributes C and D with two tuples, y1, y2, and y3, uh, y4. And the Cartesian product between the two is basically a new tuple, a new relation, R Cartesian product S, which basically has four attributes, the attributes from R followed by the attributes from S, and any combination of tuples. So X1, X2 is combined with both Y1 and Y2 and Y3 and Y4. So we get two tuples from X1 and X2, and then we get two tuples from X3 and X4. So X3 and X4 is again combined with both tuples Y1 and Y2, Y3 and Y4. The Cartesian product is very expensive to compute because it's quadratic in the number of rows. If you had n, n rows or n tuples in R and n tuples in uh, S, you will have n squared tuples in R Cartesian product S. So it's basically any beginning of uh, any basically tuple that begins with a tuple from R and ends with any possible tuple from S. Now, in order to do Cartesian product, you basically, you cannot have attributes with the same name. So the result has to be a relation. 
And the uh, attributes of a relation have to have distinct names. And this is not guaranteed by Cartesian product. You can have in one relation the same, uh, the same attribute, like for instance, in our previous example, uh, the attribute A could be the same with the attribute C. So now we have a relation that's not quite correct. It's not well formed. Two attributes are different. So what can we use is the renaming operator. The renaming operator is basically a relation that is followed by uh, brackets and the attributes of that relation. So you basically can assign new names, aliases, A1 to AN, to the attributes uh, of N columns in the new relation that is produced by expression. So in our example, if I want to create a Cartesian product of uh, two relations that have overlapping attributes. So in our previous class, we had this bigger example of students, class uh, courses, professors, departments, and two of the relations were called transcript and teaching. So the transcript relation has the student ID, the course code, the semester, and the grade. And the teaching relation has the professor ID, the course code, and the semester. And let's say that we have two projections. We project the transcript on the student ID and the course code, and we project the teaching on the professor ID and the course code. And we, can, we want to compute the Cartesian product between the two relations. We can directly apply Cartesian product because course code is the same uh, attribute. So in the result, we would have two attributes uh, with the same name. However, we can apply the renaming operator, which transforms the attributes in the first uh, relation to student ID and course code one, and in the second relation to professor ID and course code two. So now we can actually apply Cartesian product and we get a new relation, which is the Cartesian product of student ID course code one, professor ID course code two is just an example that basically shows that you can use renaming to do a Cartesian product. We'll use renaming for other operations when we do joins, which takes us to joins. So a theta join or a general join of two relations R and S is the expression R join, join condition with S. So it's basically we want to compute the Cartesian product between R and S and filter it only for those uh, tuples on which the joint condition is true. And the joint condition is a conjunction of terms or AI operator BI, where AI is an attribute from the relation R and BI is an attribute from the relation S. So it's basically a Boolean condition that states which tuples from the Cartesian product should be, should we keep? Like basically in any tuple that is uh, resulted from this uh, join, we want to have this condition that AI operator BI must be true. So for instance, I want uh, a natural join that an attribute a AI is equal with another attribute BI, a foreign key from the other table. So this is a join with a condition. Uh, equijoin that states that this, this attribute is the same with this attribute. But you can use any one at, uh, operator that we discussed before, equal, less than, greater than, uh, greater than equal, not equal, and less than equal. The meaning is really that we are applying Cartesian product, and then we uh, uh, apply a selection on the joint condition. Now the joint condition, again, it's the same with joint condition prime with the possibility of renaming because basically we may have attributes that have the same name. So again, R and S may have attributes with the same name for which Cartesian product is not defined. So we rename those attributes prior to forming the product and we use the new names in a joint condition. Or we can qualify uh, the attribute names with the relation name. So in the condition, you can have the transcript dot code, uh, uh, course code and the teaching dot course code. So 
And in the result of the join, uh, you basically have these uh, new attributes, transcript.course code and teaching.course code. This is the same in SQL when we will actually see it later that if you have the same attribute name, you can precede it, qualify it with the relation name and then period. Now, this doesn't always solve the problem because sometimes we do a join uh, on the same relation, R with R. So using the basically just R as the qualifier in front of the attribute with, with the no on which of the two R's are we going to uh, work. In SQL, we also have an alias. You can specify from what table as what name. And then you can basically distinguish between the two relations if they are the same, like in this case. We'll see that when we talk about uh, uh, SQL. So a theta join is basically, this is an example that uh, basically has two, two relations, uh, employee with name, ID, manager ID and salary, and the manager with the name, ID and salary. And we want to output the names of all the employees that earn more than their managers. So we'll basically do a join first, the employee where the manager ID is equal with the ID from the manager side and the salary of the employee is greater than the salary of the manager. This will give us basically all the tuples that contain the name of the employee, the ID of the employee, the manager ID, the salary of the employee, the name of the manager, the ID of the manager and the salary of the manager. And from that, we only want the names of those employees that made the salary, salaries greater than their managers. So we basically apply a projection on the employee name, which will give us only the names of the employees that earn more than their managers. Okay. So the inner join, this join here will basically uh, yield a table, a new relation with all these attributes, all the attributes in employee, followed by all the attributes in manager. And then we project the result on only the employee name. And that will basically give us the names of all those employees that earn more than their managers. If all the uh, conditions in this join condition are equalities, this is called a, an equal join. So an equal join is basically a join in which all of these are equalities, like for instance, uh, if we want those students that got uh, grades of A and we want the names and the courses in which they got the grades of A, we would basically write this equal join where the ID of the student is equal with the I student ID in the transcript, but where from the transcript we select only those uh, tuples for which the grade is an A. So this will give us the student names and other data about the student uh, address and so on uh, with the top with the uh, attributes from transcript like the what grade they got in the the grade a in what course and then we project on the name and the course so it will give us the names of students and what courses they gave they got a in okay so Equal joins are quite useful because they basically use those foreign keys that we talked about last class. They basically combine data from different tables where the foreign key is equal with the primary key in another table. Okay. Natural joins. Special case of equal joins where we want to uh, equate all and only those attributes with the same name. So the condition doesn't have to be explicit anymore. Like for instance, if I want to see what professors taught those students from transcripts, uh, because of the fact that the transcript relation has the attributes course code and semester, and the teaching relation has the course code and semester attributes, I can just apply a natural join. So natural join is an equal join where all of the attributes that are equal are basically uh, uh, equalized between the first relation and the second relation. So transcript natural join teaching is really 
uh, the projection on the remaining attributes. We only keep one copy of the course code and one copy of the semester. So it, it eliminates the duplicates. It only keeps one copy of the columns that are duplicated because of the equal join. So it, pre it projects the natural, the equal join where the course code in the first relation is equal with the course code in the second relation and the semester in the first relation is equal with the semester in the second relation. Now, once we do the join and we project them on these attributes, we also rename the attributes. So we basically don't have the qualifiers, the original relations anymore. So student ID, course code, semester, grade, and professor ID. More generally, basically the natural join between two relations R and S is the projection on the attribute list of the selection on the join condition of the Cartesian product between R and S. So basically the attributes that are going to be used for the projection are the union of the attributes from R and the attributes from S. We eliminate the duplicates. So in one way, you can actually think of this as the union of the attributes minus the intersection of the attributes. Then the join condition in the select is the equal join where we had, we had the same attributes in R and S. So whatever is the same attribute, we basically have an equality and the conjunction between all of those equalities where A1 to AN were the intersection of the attributes. So really we have a projection on the union of the attributes minus the intersection. And we have a, a, a selection on the joint condition where the attributes are the same, a conjunction of all of the same attribute names and the Cartesian product. But really the way that we are going to execute it is not by using Cartesian product. It's internally is going to use indices. So it computes this join in uh, nearly uh, linear time. Also, one thing that we'll learn about query optimization is that it's very good to apply selections as soon as possible. So some join conditions that only apply to uh, one, the attributes in one, in one relation, we would push them inside. So we basically filter out as many tuples as we can from the intermediate results before we apply joins on those, uh, on those relations. And even when we apply joins, we do it with indices, uh, with uh, good indices using hashing or other uh, ways of indexing uh, attributes. Okay, so here we have an example. On the same database that we had before, if we want to list all of the student IDs who took at least two different courses, we would do a natural join. So basically we do a natural join between transcript and transcript. And this will basically do it on, uh, the second transcript is uh, renamed to student ID and then course code two, semester two and grade two. So transcript with that will actually do a natural join on the same student. So we'll have all the possible pairings of courses taken by the same student. Then we select uh, on where the course code is different than the course code two, which will give us all the possible tuples where a student is basically with two courses that are different. We don't want to join in this example on all the attributes because that will give us the same with the original transcript. So that's why we are going to do the renaming on the student ID and every old, all the other attributes are different. This will basically give us in all the possible pairings, including uh, the student took 316 and let's say 305 or 305 and 316. So all the possible orderings also. If you don't want all the possible orderings, you can use less than here. And then you will basically get one single tuple for every pairing. Division. So another operation which is actually obtained uh, from the previous operations that we saw is division. And what is used for is for those cases where you want all the tuples from one relation that match all of the tuples from another relation. 
So I can give you a very good example in this case. Let's say that there are a set of required courses. Like in computer science, you must take 114, 214, 219, 216, 316, 416. And you want all of the students that took all of the required courses. For that, you can use division. So division basically allows you to do this. You have a relation that contains a set of attributes, A1 to AN, B1 to BM. Another relation that has a set of attributes, B1 to BM. The division between R and S is a new relation with a set of attributes, A1 to AN, where every single tuple from B was satisfied by a tuple from the original relation R, such that all of the values from B from S are uh, matched, okay? So basically it keeps all of the tuples where we have the, the, those attributes that were not matched in S, for which every tuple from S is also, uh, is, exists in one of the tuples in R, okay? So how can we represent these in terms of the previous operations that we saw, projection, set difference, and cross product. As follows. First, we create a Cartesian product between the projection on the attributes A1 to AN of R with S. So basically, it creates all possible pairings. In our example, would be the, new, the names of the students with all possible courses in the university or in the computer science department. Then we subtract from uh, T, because T has the same attributes with R, we can basically subtract from T all of the tuples from uh, R. Then we can project the tuples that were obtained in U onto A1 to AN. And then we can subtract from these tuples that we obtained those tuples from V. So we can we basically we uh, project on the attributes a1 to an uh, the tuples in R and then we subtract the tuples in V. Okay, there are a couple of questions. I probably skip them. So Kevin is asking, don't we have to do ID is equal with student ID? I assume that that question was for uh, if you can mention the, the, uh, the slide number. So here we have both student IDs. Here we have ID is equal with student ID. And we do have uh, in this equijoin ID is equal with student ID. Okay, in the natural join slide, uh, transcript with teaching on the next one. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, probably the next one. Okay, what about this one? List of the students who took at least uh, two different courses. And tra both transcript have student ID. So I think uh, you were thinking of the other uh, example where we had teaching but here we are actually using transcript in both. So the student ID is the same in both of them, only the other attributes are different. Course code in the first one semester grade, while here we have course code two semester two grade two. So student ID and student ID are the same. Uh, probably you mean case sensitivity, but case uh, uh, SQL is case insensitive. So it's a natural join. It's implied that all of the attributes with the same name will be equalized between the first uh, relation and the second relation. Okay, good. And then there was another question from Akshay. What if we wanted a natural join on a natural join, say something like student, student ID name, transcript, student ID, course code, semester grade, professor, course code, department ID. So the join, we can join the student with the transcript and then join that with the professor. And yes, that will basically give us uh, students 
that took uh, courses and got a grade. And basically now the professor that taught that course, and this is all joined on basically. So it's, you can join student with a transcript and the result with, uh, uh, basically I can put it in the chat. Student with transcript, natural joint with professor. The order has to be important. And this X that I put there is natural join because uh, we don't want Cartesian product. So it's really, if you want, you can put vertical bars to state that this is natural join. It's not a Cartesian product. Otherwise, this looks like Cartesian product. Okay. So the order is important because you don't want to join student with professor and they have uh, totally different uh, attributes. There is no natural join there. Okay, good. So let's return to division. So basically what we want is, let's assume that we have a table with all of the mandatory courses. And you see here in the first table, we have one took A and B, two took A, B and C, uh, three took A, B, and C, and four took four, uh, B and C. We want those students that took all of the tuples from uh, B. So this is the division operator. We divide the relation R with the relation S, and we are basically getting the division. Okay. Good. So here we have an example, list all the students that passed all the courses, let's say taught in fall of 2020. Or a simpler example is the one that I mentioned, all the students that passed all the required courses. So in this case, the numerator would be student, uh, basically the student ID and the course code for every code passed by the student. So we can basically select those tuples in the transcript where the grade is different than F. Uh, basically, it's a passing grade. And then we project on the student ID and the course ID. And the denominator of the division will be the course code of all of the courses taught in fall of 2020. So we do a selection on the teaching where the semester is fall of 2020. And we project on the course code and then we execute the division and that will give us the student IDs uh, for those that passed all the courses taught in the fall of 2020. Okay. Now, in our uh, uh, databases, we are going to use SQL. So SQL stands for Structure Query Language. And you see now that although we used it for data definition uh, language in the previous class, now we are actually using the query part of this query language. And the syntax is quite simple. It's select the columns on which we want actually to project the result from the list of the tables. And really here we do a Cartesian product where we have a select uh, condition and we basically keep only those tuples for which this condition is true. And there are other operators that we can apply. There is ordered by, there is group by. In fact, uh, quite the order is a little bit different. These are optional operators, the ones that are below. So we have group by, we have having, some condition on uh, aggregate, so let's put condition. And then we have uh, order, the, re the final result on an ordered by. So we are going to discuss all of these different uh, parts of a select statement. Okay. Now remember our schema for the student registration system. I will go one more time over it because I'm going to use for the rest of the lecture today. The student table has a primary key ID and other attributes, name, address, and status. Professor has an ID, name, department ID. Uh, the course has a department ID, course code, uh, course name, and description. Uh, and you see the course code is the primary key. 
The transcript has a student ID, course code, and semester and grade. A student can take a course in uh, one uh, 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 during a semester, take a course for a grade for in a semester only once. Uh, the teaching table has the professor ID, course code, and semester, and the course code and semester. So every course is only offered once in this database uh, in, uh, during a semester. You don't have the same course offered multiple times. Uh, department uh, has department ID and name. Okay. So now the first type of queries that we are going to write are simple select from where queries. So select uh, course name out of a course which uh, is aliased with uh, the alias C, where uh, the department ID is equal with CSC. So the evaluation strategy here is that actually the from part is first looked at, which produces the Cartesian product of all of the listed tables. And we can rename those tables with tuple variables or aliases for that relation, which ranges over all of the rows in that core, in that uh, table. So we rename, it's not necessary, but it's very uh, useful to rename the relations, uh, if, especially if we use them multiple times. Where we'll filter from that Cartesian product, like a selecting relational algebra, those tuples where the department ID is CSC. So where filters those rows satisfying the condition, like in uh, select. Uh, select part basically restrains or projects the, re the resulting relation only on the listed columns. So here basically we'll have a subset of the columns available from the result of the Cartesian product and selection afterwards. So really this select statement in SQL is equivalent to a, projector, a projection on the course name of the selection where the department ID is CSC of the course. Okay. In this case, we don't have a Cartesian product because we have a single table. But when you select from multiple tables, you would have a Cartesian product of those tables. Now we can do a join. So a join is really like a Cartesian product. If I want, let's say, the name of all of the courses taught in fall of 2020. So I basically, I do not have the name of the course in teaching where I have the semester. So I need basically both tables, course and teaching. So I can select the course name from the tables course and teaching where the uh, course code in the course table is the same with the course code in the teaching table. So this is like an equijoin or natural join because this is the same attribute name. And the semester in the transcript table is fall of 2020. When there is no confusion of what attribute is used because it's a single attribute in the uh, combined attributes of the two tables, you can omit the alias. So you do not need to qualify that uh, attribute with the table name. So in this example, basically the first condition that we have in the conjunction c.course code is equal with t.course uh, code relates the facts in the course table with the teach the facts in the or the tuples in the teaching table where the course code is the same. The second selection condition or the second condition in the where clause is a selection condition. It eliminates all of the other rows but those that the semester is fall of 2020. So that's basically the way that this is executed. It you can see it as a join or a Cartesian product followed by a selection, followed by a projection in on the tuples, on the attributes that are selected in select. If you want to select all of the attributes from the resulting relation, you don't need to enumerate them all. You can just use a star and then select star from and that selects all of the, the tuples, okay? Actually, let me write this here so it's clear. So followed by a projection, on course code, 
and note, just a note, simple note. Star means or select star means all the attributes. We don't need to enumerate them. Okay. So now basically we have a direct correspondence between SQL and relational algebra. So in SQL, basically we have this same query that we saw before. This can be written in relational algebra as uh, a natural join between the course and the selection from teaching of those courses that were taught in semester in the fall of 2020. Or we can write it as uh, a projection on the course uh, name of the selection on the uh, courses that were taught in uh, 2020 of the natural join between course and teaching. But this will give us more tuples as intermediate tuples because it creates uh, all of the course names with uh, uh, the teaching tuples. So not only those that were basically from the fall of 2020, much more than that. Uh, or you can basically write it in a different way, projection on the course name over the selection or where the course code in one tuple is the, in, in course is the same with the course code in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, teaching and the semester is fall of 2020 of the Cartesian product where we renamed the column course code in course uh, and the uh, uh, column uh, course code in transcript. And really the way that you should see is that procedural, uh, that algebra expressions are procedural and these, although these are all equivalent, the first one is the most efficient because it filters, it selects first on teaching only those uh, courses that were taught in the fall of 2020. So it doesn't basically over, over compute a Cartesian product if we are only interested in a smaller set of those. Okay. On slide 23, I meant course name, not course code. So here the projection, you are completely right. The projection is course name. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. Now, if we want to find the IDs of all of the professors who taught at least two courses in the same semester, we need the teaching relation twice because we need to basically combine courses taught by the same professor. So for that, we actually use this uh, alias that we created before, T1, the tuple variables. So we join the same relation teaching with itself, which basically creates all of the tuples. Basically, now we state that the professor ID in the two have to be the same. So now we'll basically have professor with two different courses, course codes, then the semester must be the same. So the professor with two courses in the same semester, but the courses have to be different. And then we project on the professor ID. So this will basically give us the IDs of all of the professors that taught at least two courses in the same semester. It's basically equivalent to, again, a relational algebra expression where we join, do a natural join on the professor ID after we rename the uh, course codes in the two relations teaching, teaching relations. Then we do a selection on those tuples where the course codes were different and then we project on the professor ID. So it will tell us which are the professors that taught in at least one semester two different courses. At least two different courses. Now, one thing that we said about relations and we also remind, I reminded you today uh, about relational algebra is that it's a set-based semantics. Duplicate rows are not allowed, allowed in relations. However, SQL uh, doesn't do it by default. 
So in SQL, even if you do have duplicates, they will be kept in the result because it's quite expensive without sorting to do duplicate elimination. So if you do want to eliminate duplicates, you have to add the distinct keyword, select distinct, and then you enumerate the attributes that you are interested. This distinct is used uh, in many different cases. We will actually see it later when we talk about aggregates, that for instance, if you want to count uh, distinct professors or distinct classes, you, would, you can also use this distinct keyword inside an aggregate because it basically aggregates over multiple tuples. At this time, basically the only uh, reason is that if the resulting relation has the same tuples, we would want to select distinct uh, tuples that will eliminate the relations, the tuples that are the same. Equality and comparison operators also apply to strings. We saw that, for instance, the name can be uh, compared with the letter P. We can also do concatenation. The double vertical bar is used for concatenating. You can actually do concatenation both in the conditions or in the values that are selected uh, through the select clause. So here we have that the name concatenated with double dash concatenated with address is equal with some value. Could be a constant that uh, John that lives at 123 uh, Main Street. But you can also do that combination in the result. So you can select a single column, num name and address, and that is the result of concatenating the name with the address from student. Now, the next type of operators are those set operators that we saw before. Union, except, which is set difference, and intersection are just direct operators for union compatible tables, tables which have the same columns, attributes with the same domains. So for instance, if I want to find all the professors in computer science and all of the professors that taught computer science courses, like what we basically consider uh, our all professors that taught computer science courses, we would do a union like this one. Basically, we will select the professors that taught computer science courses. That's the first select statement, which does uh, the join between professor and teaching where the professor ID is equal with the teaching professor ID and the course code is like CSC and like is basically another operator that we will talk about a little bit later where the percent sign in the string is uh, similar to star is basically a clean star in, re in uh, uh, basically regular expressions. So in this case, basically it says any course that starts with CSC and that's it. So this selects all of the professors that taught computer science courses, union, all of the professors projected on the name, which have the department, the CSC department. So this will give you the set of all the professors that either are in computer science Maybe some of them never taught any course because they may taught, teach courses in AMS or in math, or they may uh, be new professors that are in the department, but they haven't taught any course yet. And union, all of the professors that taught courses in computer science, even if they are not in the computer science department, like probably professors in applied math that teach computational geometry, or professors from linguistics that teach computation, uh, computing, uh, computational linguistics. So it's a union. Nested queries. So if we want, for instance, all the courses that were not taught in the fall of 2020. Now, we can't express them with the previous queries, the previous operators that we saw, because we have to select all of the possible courses and then exclude from those courses those that uh, basically are not in the, uh, that they are not, they were not taught in fall of 2020. You can do this in two different ways. You can do it uh, with the exclude, which is the minus operator, 
in some uh, languages, in fact, this ex except is minus. Uh, and, or you can do it with the in operator. So the in operator and also the not in operator is an operator that can appear in the conditions in the where clause where the value of one attribute is not in or is in the results selected by a nested query. So the nested query selects all of the course codes from the teaching table where the semester was fall of 2020. Then from the courses table, we extract all of the tuples for which the course code is not in that list of values, which are the courses taught in 2020. Okay. Yes, you can also use except. Basically, we can uh, select all of the courses, except all of the courses, all of the course codes, except all of the course codes uh, which were taught in fall of 2020. And then you basically have to do again a join with course to extract the course name because we were looking in the course names. Okay. So if you want to write it with except, you would have to write a little bit a longer query because you will have to use except and then to join that with uh, uh, basically again the course table so you can extract the course name. So the evaluation strategy, at least in this case, is that we execute the inner query once, the nested query once. It doesn't have any variable that was in the outer query, so we are not going, uh, going to qualify the inner queries. So we only execute once the inner query, then we execute the outer query, and for every tuple in course, we check if the course code is in the values extracted in the, in the inner query. But sometimes you have correlated nested queries where the, out, the, out, the outer query actually has a value, uh, an alias that is used in the inner query. So for instance, I want to extract all of the courses that uh, all the professors, professor and department, if the professor has taught a course in a, a department. So basically in this case, we have an outer query which selects the name of the professor and the name of the department from professors and departments where the professor ID is in. And now we have the set of all of the professor's IDs who have taught a course in the department with the department ID. So we basically use that department ID to execute the inner query, which selects all of the professor IDs from the teaching and the course, where the course code in teaching is the same with the course code in the course. And the department ID is the same with the department ID in the, department, the outer department. So the tuple variables P and D are global the tuple variables T and C are local, but the global tuple uh, variable D with the attribute department parameterizes the nested query. So actually in this case, we can't execute only once the inner query, we actually have to execute while we are executing the outer query for every tuple, we have to re-execute the inner query because we are looking for every single, uh, all the professors in all the departments, okay. in every one of the departments that is uh, extracted out. These correlated queries are quite uh, expensive because it's again quadratic. For every tuple in the outer uh, query, we have to execute the inner query. Now, there is one question in the chat. It doesn't necessarily have the p.id, right? Professor has ID. And department, let's actually take a look at the schema for department. Department has department ID. 
So if the question is the fact that we don't need p.id, we can just put id, that's correct. Okay, I think that was the question. Good, now division. So again, let's say that we want a query, give me all the students that took the required courses in CSC, or find me all the professors that taught courses in all the departments. So this is a standard example of division. You basically will have to first project create a relation in which you have professor ID and department ID, which you can do by basically joining teaching with course and then projecting on the professor ID and the department ID, and then create a table of all of the department IDs, which only has one attribute, department ID, and you do basically projection on department ID of department. And the division of these two is basically the query that we are looking for. However, uh, this operator is not in SQL. So we'll have to implement them, implement it in some way. And again, we are going to do it as follows. First, we find the set of all departments in which a particular professor has taught a course. We find the list of all of the departments uh, in the university. Then for every tuple, every professor P, we are going to print it if, uh, if we are going to return it as the result in a relation, if the courses that the professor teaches is a superset of the courses, all the courses in the university. Or equivalently, if the, the courses in the university minus the courses that this professor teaches is empty. So this is exactly how we are going to implement. Select from professor table, all of the professor IDs where it doesn't exist the following case. If we subtract from all of the departments, so we select all of the departments, sorry about that, the department IDs, and we subtract from that select uh, those departments in which from teaching and course, where the professor ID from teaching is the same with the professor ID for the professor that we are looking. This is a correlated query with that global variable P that we defined for the professor. And the course code in the teaching table is the same with the course code in the course table. So basically we, we, what we are doing, we find all of the departments in which this professor taught a course in, we subtract from the, uh, the set of all possible departments, these departments, and if this doesn't exist, basically it means that it's empty, then we keep the professor ID, meaning that this professor taught in all of the possible departments. So it's basically almost the same way that we are doing, uh, sub basically uh, implementing division. We find all of the uh, in this case, all of the tuples for that, for that professor. Then we find all of the, course, the uh, courses and departments in which that professor taught. We find all of the departments, we subtract from the departments, the departments that this professor taught in. And if it's empty, we return that professor ID. Okay. Okay, aggregates. So, there are two ways actually in which aggregates are uh, used in uh, uh, SQL. And one of them is to actually have it in the select statement. So here we basically have select all the, uh, the count of all of the professors or the maximum salary of employees. It produces numbers, not tables. So they can be used for attribute values, but We'll, we'll only use them when we group by a certain uh, attribute. So when they are used in part of the select, they basically just count or compute a maximum for the relation that we have under it. So for instance, if I want all the, the number of courses taught in fall of 2020, 
we basically run a query like this one, select count of all of the course codes from teaching where the semester in, is equal with fall of 2020. If multiple courses of uh, multiple sections of the same course are taught, then we can do count distinct. This is what I meant earlier. So basically we select distinct course codes for, that were taught in fall of 2020 and we count them uh, only once. Grouping. How do we actually group the, to compute the number of courses taught in fall of 2020 per professor? So let's say that if I have the ID of every professor, I can do a count for that professor. So I basically select from teaching the semester uh, 2020 for the professor ID with this ID that I wrote here, and I count the courses for that professor. But then you have to query professor by professor. Another way to do it is to define a special grouping operator. So we select from the teaching where the semester is fall of 2020. We group by professor ID. So now we basically select the professor ID and we count the number of courses for that professor. So the attributes that we can see in the select statement are of two kinds. Those that also appeared in group by, so the professor ID can be kept here because we created groups and for every group, the professor ID is the same. And the rest are aggregates over the other attributes that were not included in group by. So in this case, we count the course codes for this, basically, this professor. If we want distinct courses that this professor taught, if multiple courses or multiple sections of the same course were taught, we can actually plug in distinct here between count and the course code. So it would be like this. Distinct. Okay. Any questions up to now? I just saw that it's 6.02, so we only have three minutes. Um, and basically we'll now get into having and uh, more aggregates with grouping. So I will stop here for today. One note, one additional note that I would like to add even before we do grouping, maybe right at the beginning, is that you can also rename the name of the attribute. So let's put it here as an example. You can name this attribute as, and you can give a different name for the new attribute, like course, just course, okay? So this is another feature that I didn't mention up to now. Oops. I will update the slides and put them on the website. So that's all for today, unless you have additional questions. And then next class, we'll basically continue with SQL and then using MySQL uh, from Node.js. And then we'll continue next week with MongoDB and using MongoDB from MySQL, from uh, uh, Node.js. Okay. So Kevin is asking, can we explain strategy one for aggregate in the aggregate slide? Okay, excellent. So the strategy one is that I cannot actually compute for each professor uh, I cannot actually respond to this question. You cannot compute the number of courses ta taught per professor unless you know every single professor and you basically query for every professor as a separate query. While in the second one, you get every professor and their number of courses without having to run separate queries professor by professor. Yes, exactly. You have to run it strategy one for every professor. While in this, uh, in the second way, you get every professor with its course, with its count. Okay. 
That's all for today. It's 6.05. Thank you very much. See you next class. I will stop recording and put the recording.